Hello and welcome back to Hidden Gem. We've had a bit of a break since we made it halfway through season one and we're back now with a review of episode seven, Bullock Returns to Camp. This episode was written by Jodie Worth and directed by Michael Engler. This episode is a much more sober affair, but promises to amp things up now, we're on our way to the series finale. New characters are introduced, and Al, who has been riding high over the last few episodes, gets some of his bite back, which we saw at the beginning of the season. This episode's themes revolve around Bullock returning to camp from Chase and McCall, two young strangers come to camp looking for their pa, Alma finally burying her husband, R.I.P. Brom. Trixie being found out by Al and being reminded of where she belongs. Al dealing with E.B., Trixie and Seth over the gold claim. Joni accepting a new hire. And Jane, the Doc and the Rev at the pest tent. So a lot happens in this episode. And um, though we have some repeat conversations, the pace remains high. And we get some great scenes throughout amping us up towards the end of season one. So let's get this one started and roll the intro. find ourselves with Seth and Charlie as they continue their pursuit of Jack McCall. In a brief but amazing scene, they catch their prey and we're rewarded with, I think, the only time Seth drops a C-bomb. Being a loud mouth cunt. Seth then gives Charlie the opportunity to kill Jack, which he refuses and adheres to Seth's judgment to turn him over to the federal authority at Yankton. Well, we're Bill Hickok's friends. My plan is to take him to Yankton for trial. Back in Deadwood, Dan is setting up for the day and two young newcomers uh, are in the gem looking for their pa, who, like many others, has come in search of gold to set up his family, or so it might seem. Be 12 years older now. Where I know you from? A very young Kristen Bell, who's gone on to have a super successful and diverse career. She's well known for her roles in Veronica Mars and The Good Place, and has found huge success in movies like Forgetting Sarah Marshall and, of course, Frozen. Greg Sipes um, seems to have been just as busy, if not more so. Um, he is a voice actor who has been in many things. Most notably, he is the voice of Michelangelo from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Dan is enamoured with Flora. Al offers both a job, but only Miles accepts. Can you push a broom? And I can start now. We teach a special sweeping technique here. Follow her lead. Better learn that sweeping technique, mister. Yes. Yes, sweet. sweet. Poor Joey. Just like the TV show, it looks like the end times are close. Damn it! I'm required to be at the graveyard. The widow Garrett is laying her husband to rest. He then hands over to Jane as we get the revelation that the man in the creek, Brom Garrett, uh, how long has he actually been in the creek? Um, we might be able to work that out this episode. Um, and I bet it's been a very long fucking time. Um, so, I, so I hope they kept his body downstream, um, otherwise that could be gross. What that whore has been telling me the last ten fucking days. As we can see, there's a clip later on where Trixie has been working for Alma for ten days, and her husband had been dead for a few days before that, so we're looking anywhere between two weeks to three uh, at this point. Damn. <laughs> if you think you're psychic, you weren't. <laughs> Andy Crane is also living upright and it might be the only time she's referred to as Calamity. What do you think of my patient, Doc? Well, I want to steer clear of his reflection for a while, but you're symptom-free, you ain't contagious no more, and you can't get reinfected, so... Damn, his heels under my hair, stay fucking heel. You're after in Calamity, I'll be sure to call for Jane. <laughs> Jane also asks him about when they first met in the woods. It's a shame we never got to see how villainous he was. So I respected him greatly up until the point he left him to die. So it's uh, so his repentance must be quite a moment in his life. Because I'm going to monitor your activities, find out what you do weigh so heavy on your fucking conscience. 
When I first come on you in the woods, all you could say was I apologize. Shut the fuck up! At the Grand Central, Alma is feeling much better and teasing Trixie about Mr. Star and Al watching them, both expecting Alma to still be on the dope. Alma again feeling much better makes light of the situation, not really understanding the peril Trixie is putting herself in. Mr. Star has been ever so attentive. When we leave the hotel, my boss will be watching. Shall I reel and stagger? I can't imagine why I'd make it the subject of humor. You're feeling better. So funny. You are so funny. As Al sees her leaving for the funeral, he has some thoughts. That widow ain't high. As he looks to EB for clarification, EB chooses this moment to confront Al about being used to put in an offer back for the gold claim. I checked in on the woman daily. If I was fooled, perhaps I've chosen simple-mindedness, Al. Used me as an instrument of purposes he concealed. Say what you're gonna say or prepare for eternal fucking silence. We all know what the B in EB stands for. Bold. You got damn right. But it pays off. Though Al gives him a lecture, he also gives him 2%. We agreed on 2,000. You want a fucking percentage instead? Is that such an inconceivable proposition? Go to 20 if you have to. Just get that fucking claim. 20 if I have to. My word. Flora's made it over to the Bella Union in search of her father. Between Cy and Joni, they agree to hire Flora under the tutelage of Joni to learn about the oldest profession. Well, what are you going to do while your brother works? Work too, while we're looking to set aside if we have to move on. Uh, if Dad doesn't turn up here, yeah. Well, what do you do? What can I what? do? How quick do you learn? So you better put me to work while you can. Maestro. God, you have a creepy smile. Now at the funeral, we are treated to a little closure for Sophia, saying goodbye to her family at last. Henry is in his father's house. Mike. And on the great day, Mama. his father will take him into it. Papa. As he will all. The funeral is then interrupted uh, twice, first by the Bullock's return to camp, and then by E.B. thinking this is the perfect time to offer on the claim. He's still under bids, like the grade-A cocksucker he is. My sympathies, madam. But my own requirements force me to ignore what's seemly. I must decide where to place my capital. Might raising my offer to, say, $19,500 uh, prompt you to an immediate answer? No, Mr. Fun. Charlie leaves Bullock to it as he's not ready yet to see Bill's grave. Yeah, I didn't soon not see Bill now. I'll see him some other time. Dan still pines for Flora. I hope you ain't give up on that little run of a girl, Al. Al then has Miles witness the degenerate Titlicker flee his daily vice. And out the door he'll go and prompt as a Swiss fucking timepiece, three big kitted whores will now emerge from behind that screen. I wish I could show you. Something you gotta know about specialists. They pay a premium and they never cause fucking trouble. Very true, Al. Uh, and for no money at all, you could share, like, subscribe, and comment down below. We really get to see both sides of Al in this episode. First funny, and then terrifying. And to let them know they're amongst their own, maybe I'll operate from the corner, hanging upside down like a fucking bat. Hmm? Upside down? Oh, ain't no such bad sorts here, huh, Miles? No, sir. So, do you want to ask your sister if she'd like to reconsider? <laughs> <laughs> You're funny. I did my part. Raised our offer to 20 and demanded answer within the day. EB gives Al the bad news, especially about Bullock being back in the camp. But what, you cocksucker? Complications have ensued. Bullock's come back. <laughs> and I trust this doesn't alter our agreement. I trust you know 2% nothing's fucking nothing. I wouldn't count on it. Bullock catches up with Alma after the funeral for lunch. Are you firing me, Mrs. Garrett? I'm uh, offering you absolution. Otherwise, I'm staying on. But that would entail acknowledging that I've had a weakness in that direction. She tries to release him from his duty now that she feels better, relinquishing the information as to why, which leads them both commenting on how they look changed. Alma from her freedom from the dragon, Seth after his fight with the Indian and catching Jack McCall. You are changed. You seem to be too. Soul tries out his charm on Trixie. Our special get acquainted with those we'd like to get acquainted with, Sam. Charlie then interrupts with their resupply. She favors you, she could be yours. Make those accounts add up. 
On thanking Charlie for saving Seth and giving condolences for Bill, we can really see the pain losing his friend has brought to Charlie. He is definitely one of the most human characters in the show. I'm sorry you lost yours. All right. Thank you. EB, always the coyote type, comes to the hardware store demanding Trixie sees Al immediately. He then skulks away. Stickler for self-delivered messages. Joni provides all the background and reasoning Flora would ever need to continue this charade. There's so many ways it could be, Flora. It's not much point deciding which it was. To be fair to Flora, she's got a lot of stories to keep Joni believing. You can't tell my brother about him. He'd make it back to Buffalo and shoot Lewis in the head. All that way in defense of your virtue? But there might be other reasons for Joni to want to believe her. And he confronts Cy and is thrown out. Ah, oh, hell. The important thing is you're well. I'll front you whatever you need. Let's get something going. Better than to throw him in the woods to fucking die. Cy then shows Joni what is important to him, and there are some dark lines here. Did you turn her out? Her brother's going to be a problem. Fuck her brother. We'll handle the brother. We have to kill the cocksucker. Unfortunately, from one disturbing scene to another, Al from episode one and two is back and ready to dish out repercussions to Trixie, who has been living the good life away from the gem. What is it? Am I detaining you? With the lies and attitude she delivers, Al comes close to hurting her again and makes it for difficult watching, as we're unsure which way his mind might fall. Get back there quick. He still assaults her and threatens worse, but lets her go, but not before reminding her where she belongs. Don't kid yourself, Trixie. Don't get a mistaken idea. From disturbing to sad, Charlie has made his way to the number 10 saloon to see the spot where Wild Bill was shot. Remorseful and just as upset, Tom apologises and tells Charlie what he wants to hear. That's where Bill got killed, huh? I'll be sorry about that for as long as I live. A couple hours of daylight left and in come that coward McCall. The captain, a bystander in the shooting, then speaks about Charlie's want or need to hear the complete sordid details of the incident, which comes more across more like a boasting than mournful. Other characters in the bar feel the same way and are dismissive of the captain's claims. Aces over eights, as I just now recall. That is the hand that Wild Bill had. Sure, Captain. Joni, the maestro of girls, is training Flora on how to present herself. Flora demonstrates her ability to act for the first time and how she has a sense for people. Key things required in manipulating. I prefer you happy, honey. But if you can't be, you need to pretend at it better than you're doing or you're going to be hungry and cold and getting done to you for nothing outside. What you'd have made money to live on and save up besides if you acted the part in here. Joey has passed, and the Reverend has had another fit in Jane's presence. Has young Joey gone to dust? Yeah. Jane also learns from the Rev that Jack McCall has been captured, but she doesn't like what she hears. They'd captured Jack McCall. I hope that's only the beginning of what they fucking did to him. Gave him over to the federal authorities. Gave him over? Rendered unto Caesar. The Doc then delivers some wisdom to the Rev about God's will and begs him to rest. And that's what's giving you the seizures and generating your chats with the goddamn divinity. Goddamn offense intended. Looks like Flora has already picked up a loyal John within minutes of working. My brother works in this place up here, Terrence, and he keeps a hard watch. If you want to stick it in me again tomorrow, you better let me go in there by myself. <sighs> what time are you going to start? She then makes it to the gem to wait for Miles and the Hooples, including Dan, do whatever they can to make her happy. Evening. Evening, miss. Dan seeing that violence might be the answer to that. Did she find her dad? Her chances of finding her dad are greater than yours of walking out of this door upright, unless you shut your fucking mouth. The hardware boys are catching up and Seth gets some truths off his chest. That Indian fought like hell. I guess you did too. About his latest adventure. So reminds him throughout of the truth and the consequence of Seth's actions. He's just trying to live. <laughs> Same as me, and do honor to his friend, make some fucking sense out of things, and we wind up that way, and I wind up after. 
beaten him till I couldn't recognize his face. Possibly to keep him humble, or just to point it out. That Indian saved Jack McCall's life, I'll tell you that fucking much. Not for long. Seth, angry, goes to see Al to make him accountable for the gold claims that they that have and understand. We have a private talk. Sure we can. Should I be armed? Dan's getting closer to doing something silly. I think that son of a bitch better stop looking evil at that little girl. Al, not one to back down from threats, provides a counterpoint to Bullock, who has little sense when it comes to dealings of an underhanded sort. So if any way his work was mistaken, I'd be coming after you. He might be out of his depth. What if I come for you? You ready for that? I guess I better be. Then close your fucking store, because being ready for me will take care of your waking hours, and you better have someone to hand the task off to when you close your fucking eyes. Luckily for both men, they are interrupted as Dan has gone full numpty. Dan has knifed the man staring at Flora as her and her brother were working out which joint to rob. You heard what I said about the widow. Oh yes, your holiness. You heard me too. Then Al clears up Dan's mess, much like the news of the family in the first episode, by offering free booze. So I take it this was a fair fucking fight, yeah? yeah. 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 Two free drinks for everybody. Yeah. And drinks all night for them that helps with the disposal. Miles has been asked to take her away. I'm sorry that you had to see that. Shut the fuck up, Dan, and get her the fuck away from here. Now! Fucking pussy. Charlie has now found the courage to see Bill, where Jane is already informing him of updates in town. Who's there, goddammit? What the hell does it look like? How the fuck do I know who it fucking looks like? It's dark! It's a nice moment where they speak to their dead friend, to the point Charlie is overcome with recent events and leaves. Can I tell him some more tomorrow? Sure, what the fuck are you asking me for? I don't make the rules. The episode ends with Trixie leaving Alma's services after she was asked to go with Sophia back to New York. It's a heated moment where both women demonstrate they know little of each other's worlds. Mr. Swearingen discovered our deception? Yeah. How? Looking at you walk out the fucking hotel. Looks like Trixie is to return to her pimp once again. Don't use that language with me, Trixie, or that tone. Don't you want to say to remember my place? I do, you rich cunt. And I'm going back to it. So a lot got covered there. A really good episode to set up the back end of the season. A few new characters, plot points, and reigniting rivalries mean there's a few bits to build on here and develop over the next five episodes. Stand out as usual is Al, his relationships with Trixie, Bullock and EB. He also gets a load of funny lines which helps build on his character and what drives his future plans. So let's see how many um, drinks we had this episode. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, that's right, zilch. Uh, zero. Possibly half. We nearly got uh, one, but I don't think it actually gets past our rules. So we even get teased and promised a drink, but uh, probably overdue a slower episode as it's good for my liver. The next episode, Suffer the Little Children, much like episode four, is going to ramp things up and I can't wait to rewatch it. I've got a few episodes lined up under the Hidden Gem Investigates banner. After the 30 days of shorts concludes, I intend to post a counter video, Why Deadwood is the Worst TV Show Ever Made, which is a more tongue-in-cheek, jokey episode, not one for hoopers who can't take one. Uh, and I've also got plans to do some streaming content playing through Red Dead Redemption 1 and 2. So please check out Hidden Gem Reddit and X, formerly known as Twitter, for future details. Uh, other social media is available. Thanks to everyone that inspired me, helped me and supports me daily. Please let me know if you like the videos, share with friends, subscribe for future content and I'll catch you next time on Hidden Gem. Hidden Gem.